Hello and welcome back to the Three Pillars Podcast. I'm your host, Chase Tobin, a.k.a. Tobinator, the motivator. The Three Pillars Podcast is that podcast that focuses on those three pillars of fitness, spiritual, mental, and physical fitness to help us grow closer to the Lord on this journey we call life. Guys, I'm going to do something on this podcast I've never done before. We are going to do a 12-part study on the male psyche. Yes, we're going to dive into... 12 male archetypes defined by Carl Jung, and we're going to tie each of those archetypes into the three pillars. That's what I'm going to do. That's what we're going to do for the next 12 weeks. But today we're going to do an introduction to what they are. That way it'll set you guys and prime you guys for the next couple of weeks. So I hope you're excited. I'm excited. Uh, it's something that I, I stumbled across them. I've, I've obviously been familiar with the archetypes. You know, there's like four big ones. You know, the king, the warrior, uh, kind of the rogue, and the, uh, the the sage, as it were, the four kind of bigger ones that you might see. There's 12 of them that we'll get into, and we're going to go over each of those just a little bit in this episode. Uh, but then over the next several weeks, we're going to just kind of build upon that and talk about each individual one specifically. And see where, maybe where you fit in, and then see maybe where uh, you may want to change and move yourself into. Because that's part of it. So can we actually change our archetype? I believe that we can. Um, ladies, um, take a seat, listen, maybe you'll understand your man man a little bit better. Uh, and if you guys want me to, I will do my best to do 12 females. That'll give me plenty of content over the next several months. So let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. But since I'm a dude and there's dudes that listen to this, we're going to talk about male archetypes, uh, starting today with an intro, Uh, a little longer intro than normal, but, uh, you guys know where to find me, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, I almost said MySpace, I'm dating myself, but that's where I met my wife, fun fact. So, if you're listening to this on Apple, Spotify, wherever you're listening to this, you're watching this on YouTube or Rumble, please subscribe to the show. That's how the show grows and share it. Also, go over to Good Pods. Create an account on Good Pods. The link is in the description below. Go do it right now. Follow me on Good Pods. Rate this show. Rate this episode. All the ones that you've listened to up until this point, that's going to help boost the stats over there as well. And it, uh, podcast, that Good Pods really just helps with podcast discovery. So thank you very much for all your support over there. I'm done running my sock. We're going to start with a quick word of prayer as always and dive right into the 12 male archetypes introduction. Good to go. So let us pray. Father God, thank you so much for creating each and every single one of us to be individual, unique creatures, but also showing us our purpose and how to put our gifts and our talents and our skills together for use in your kingdom. Because we're not all equal. We have equal opportunity to be great in in our own right. But you give us the tools and those special talents to thrive wherever we might be. Help us to know ourselves and help us to know you first. That we may better find ourselves and who we are in this world. That way we can truly fulfill our purpose. Fill us full of your wisdom. Fill us full of your discernment. Give us faith that's stronger each and every day. And Father God, I just ask that you be with me today. Give me the words to say. Give anybody tuning into this the eyes to see ears to hear, and hearts to receive anything that grows them closer to you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, let's check our time. I got time. Let's do this. Oh, 12 male archetypes. Again, I found this, man, I had an Instagram post or something. It was one of those, uh, uh, take this quiz and see which archetype you, you, you fit into. And I'm like, well, I don't want to take a quiz. Let me just do a little research <laughs> and figure out uh, what this is all about. So Carl Jung, uh, is really one of the most influential figures in modern psychology. He introduced the concept of these archetypes uh, as really a fundamental aspect of our kind of collective unconscious, if you want to get down that realm. I think there's some truth to that. I think that people will do uh, fit these specific archetypes, not necessarily a stereotype, could be a stereotype, uh, but there's you, you can see it in, in the media, you can see it in Hollywood, any story you've ever read, there are archetypal figures that you will find all throughout of literature in that men seem to find themselves into these 12 main ones. Um, the whole collective unconscious thing, you know, if you get into some of that, that's, that's beyond me. But I think that there is something to kind of, uh, kind of tying us all together in our, in our belief sets all across civilization too. Everybody's got their hero story. Everybody's got, had, has, has had Kings at some point. Everybody's had lovers and caregivers and things. You, it's, you see it everywhere. So it's, it's pretty awesome to see them broken down in this way. So I'm going to go through, uh, what I've got written up here, bear with me. It's I'm trying to keep this this one kind of short, and then we're going to really dig down into these the rest of the 
uh, the next 12 weeks, all right? So, so these archetypes, these 12 male archetypes are universal recurring symbols or motifs that reflect a shared experience of humanity and it helps shape our personalities and it guides our behavior. Among his many contributions, Jung identified 12 primary male archetypes, each representing a different aspect of the masculine psyche. These archetypes encapsulate the different roles, behaviors, and attitudes men may embody throughout their lives. So in this episode, we're going to really have an introduction to these archetypes, explore whether men can change their archetypes, and it's also going to examine how our faith as Christians can enhance and guide us as men in our archetypal journey, as it were. So with a deep connection to core human values and spiritual growth, Christianity offers a rich framework for men seeking to understand themselves, to develop themselves, and to transform their archetypes using faith to either solidify their chosen path that they found themselves on or to navigate and transition to a different archetypal path. Okay. Each of these archetypes highlights a different approach to life. It's going to represent your unique strength, weaknesses, motivations, and goals. Although they're often expressed individually, they can frequently overlap or evolve as men progress through different stages of life. So there, what is the, uh, the old riddle? It's like what creature walks on four legs in the morning, two legs in, at midday, and three legs in the evening? Well, it's man. Man evolves, starts crawling on four legs. As you get older, you're walking on two, and at three, you're walking with a cane, right? That's that kind of the, the answer to that riddle. Men change, men evolve, men grow. They, they go through these different uh, life. Uh, everybody's got their own journey, right? Some people are born rich. Some people end up end up poor. Some people are born poor, and they end up rich. Some people are, are at the, the silver spoon in their mouth. Some people are born with a rusty spoon. But everybody's got their own little journey. But the, the temperament that you inherit, your genetics, all these different things, uh, socioeconomic class, uh, your parental structure, your familial structure, how good close you are to the Lord, all these things shape and play a role in your psyche and in your archetype as men. So the thing about psychology, while well, it's a cool, cool field of study, you can't put an umbrella over everybody. But Jung has identified these 12 archetypes that will kind of help you sort of piece together where you might be in your life. And you might also find that some of these kind of go together. Can there be a kingly warrior? Can there be a warrior priest? Can there be a lover king? There's all these different things that could be kind of a yes and, not necessarily a not or, right? But we're going to break down each one individually. And as we go through these uh, archetypes individually, we'll talk about how some can overlap with others. How about that? So what are the 12 archetypes? The first one. I'm just going to, again, really brief blurbs on all these. But we're going to go through them over the next, uh, of this, the, over the subsequent 12 weeks, okay? First one, the king. The king represents authority, responsibility, and leadership. He is the figure who oversees and protects, maintaining order and justice. The king archetype is not only about personal power, but also about using that power for the benefit of others. At its best, the archetype reflects wisdom, fairness, and selflessness. However, at its worst, the king can become tyrannical, seeking control rather than stewardship. So a little foreshadowing here. I'm going to try to give you the highs and lows of each of the kind of pros and cons of each of these archetypes as we move through, as we get into the individual uh, episodes, as to the path you should take. And you should probably know them anyways, but we'll talk about the differences uh, in these different archetypes. The second one is the warrior. The warrior embodies discipline, courage, and action. This archetype is characterized by a readiness to fight for what is right, protect others, and face challenges head on. The warrior is a man of purpose, dedicated to his mission. Now, while the warrior's energy can be productive, pushing towards goals and defending the weak, it can also turn destructive, leading to violence or unchecked aggression. How many can relate to that? So, moving on. I'm going to hit these real quick because I don't want to keep you guys all day. The magician is number three. The magician is the archetype of wisdom, insight, and transformation, also known as a sage. He's the keeper of knowledge and mystery, often possessing the ability to see, to see beyond the ordinary. This archetype values understanding, learning, and teaching others. However, the magician can also manipulate others through his knowledge if he falls into shadow, using his insights for selfish gain. So somebody, a very learned person, really wants to teach and educate other people, but maybe they find themselves, hmm, I can use my knowledge over this other person and get more of what I want. 
Think about the church in the Middle Ages. You know, you, you went, they had the populace tricked that if you didn't donate all your money to the church, you weren't going to heaven. And people didn't know that because they couldn't read. They were just trusting in their authority figures to do what was best for them. Well, if we learn anything from the past, we know that authority has not always got your best interest in, in mind, especially when they have lots and lots and lots of power. Acton said it. I've said it before on this podcast. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. It is up to you to maybe take a little bit of each of these archetypes and put them to use in your own life. But where do you kind of shine most? We'll get into that in other episodes. <laughs> so, number four, the lover. The lover archetype is driven by passion, emotion, and connection. He seeks beauty, intimacy, and the pleasures of life, embracing both love and art. The lover is deeply attuned to his emotions and the world around him, often serving as a bridge between people. However, without balance, the lover can become lost in hedonism, obsession, or infatuation, neglecting responsibilities in the pursuit of desire. Pros and cons everything, right? The next one, the caregiver. The caregiver is the nurturer, protector, and servant. His primary, his primary motivation is to care for others, offering empathy, support, and sacrifice. This archetype is characterized by compassion and selflessness, selflessness prioritizing the well-being of others. When balanced, the caregiver offers unconditional love and service, but when out of balance, he may become a martyr, sacrificing his own needs or becoming overly controlled. Number six, the creator. The creator is the archetype of innovation, imagination, and invention. He thrives on bringing new ideas, art, or systems into existence. Creativity and originality are central to his identity. The creator archetype represents the drive to build and express oneself in new and meaningful ways. However, the creator must be cautious of perfectionism, frustration, and becoming detached from practical concerns. That was number six. Number seven, I misspoke earlier. The sage. The sage is a little different than, than the magician. Let's get into why. The sage is a seeker of truth, knowledge, and wisdom. He values intellect, reflection, and learning above all. The sage is not an arc, is not that. The sage archetype is not about action, but contemplation and understanding. That's the difference than the, than the magician. He's driven by a desire for enlightenment and higher truth. While the sage can offer deep insights, he may become overly attached or detached neglecting the emotional or practical aspects of life in favor of intellectual pursuits. So that's a little bit of a difference, more of a self-serving uh, kind of deal, kind of a hermit, if you will, a wise hermit, <laughs> as it were, as opposed to a mage who is more of an action-oriented, can use his knowledge for good or evil, as it were. Number eight, the outlaw or the rebel. The outlaw represents freedom, defiance, and revolution. He challenges the status quo often breaking the rules to bring about change or to escape from societal restrictions. The outlaw is a disruptor, motivated by a desire to overthrow corrupt systems or break free from oppression. However, his tendency towards rebellion can also lead to chaos or self-destruction, if not grounded in a higher purpose. There's usually a caveat to all these, that last part specifically. If there's not a higher purpose to an outlaw, then it's still more of a negative connotation. All those things sound pretty awesome, but it's not... Uh, let people be oppressed. Let's think about Robin Hood, right? But Robin Hood was driven by his desire to actually help others, not self-serving. He had a, um, a a more of a higher calling with his nobility and his family, and even into some Christian aspects uh, when you get into it. But that's kind of what the caveat there is for the rebel or the elf. Number nine, the innocent. The, arch the innocent archetype is characterized by purity, optimism, and trust. He sees the world with childlike wonder and believes in the inherent goodness of people. The innocent seeks happiness, safety, and simplicity, often living in hope and faith. While his innocence can bring joy and light, it may also make him very naive, vulnerable to exploitation, or unable to confront the darker aspects of life. And you can see with this one specifically how this could be like the boy growing into the man later on. What does this innocent archetype end up becoming as he gets older? A warrior, a sage, a an outlaw, a king, who knows? But this is almost like the beginning stages of it all. And in no particular order, we're going to go through these. But that's kind of the beginning, if you want to. If you stay innocent into your, your elder years, you might set yourself up for failure, unfortunately, because while a lot of people are inherently good, if you go around trusting too many people, you're going to have you're going to be taken advantage of. Anyways, that's a different, <laughs> different topic. Number 10, the explorer. The explorer is the adventurer, constantly seeking new experiences, knowledge, and personal growth. 
This archetype is driven by curiosity and the desire to discover the unknown. The explorer values freedom, independence, and authenticity, often rejecting conventional paths in favor of forging his own way. However, the explorer must guard against restlessness or dissatisfaction, as the constant search for something new can lead to a lack of commitment or fulfillment. Always trying to find that next, that next thing, but never embracing and enjoying what you've got in the now. And again, it's okay to kind of dabble between one or the other. Where do you kind of see yourself? Ask yourself. Let me know in the comments if any of these resonate with you as we go through them. And ladies, again, bear with me. <laughs> we'll get if you guys want me to, I'll do the ladies because there's female archetypes too. Let me know. Number eleven, the ruler. The ruler is the archetype of control, leadership, and responsibility. Unlike the king who rules for the good of his kingdom, the ruler seeks power and dominion often valuing control and stability above all. The ruler seeks to impose order on chaos, ensuring that, ensuring that systems run smoothly. However, excessive focus on control can lead to tyranny, micromanagement, or rigidity. So you can see some of these kind of start out kind of negative, but sometimes there is a purpose for, for being in absolute control because you have to be able to get people away from their own madness and to establish an actual system of order and then you can back off into more of a king or a priest or whatever uh, you might find yourself being. But sometimes you can see throughout history, sometimes guys have had to come in and maybe you call them a dictator or a tyrant. Depends on who's writing the history book, right? But sometimes people have to, in order to establish order, you got to break people free from their own madness. And speaking of madness, number 12, the jester. The jester archetype is playful, humorous, and lighthearted. He uses wit and laughter to diffuse tension, entertain, or challenge a serious aspect. The jester is often the trickster figure revealing truths through humor or mischief. While the jester can, be, uh, can bring about joy and perspective, he must also avoid becoming irresponsible or using humor to escape from important issues. It's okay to kind of be lighthearted, but said sometimes you have to face things head on and not just laugh about it and walk away, all right? So that's our 12 archetypes we're going to be covering. covering. We'll get into some more topics here in just a minute, but recap real quick. We've got the king, the warrior, the magician, the lover, the caregiver, the creator, the sage, the outlaw, the innocent, the explorer, the ruler, and the jester. Okay, you can write those down or tune in the next 12 episodes. Now let's ask ourselves a question. Can a man change his archetype? Well, that's a very complex question because archetypes are really seen as fundamental patterns in our unconscious mind. We're all born with a temperament and our parents have to have, hopefully have stewarded that temperament or let it go wherever it needs to go, it depends on how you were raised, okay? Some of these archetypes might feel more natural to a person based on, again, your personality, upbringing, socioeconomic status, life experiences, et cetera. But according to Jung, he believed that there's a process called individual individuation, which involves integrating various aspects of the self, including different archetypal energies. You'll find yourself in life as a man specifically Sometimes when it doesn't quite feel right, maybe you're not living out your true purpose. Maybe you've got imposter syndrome, or maybe you've got something where you feel like you have to blend in with all these different aspects of life, and you have to be this archetype over here and this person over here. Maybe you need to figure out who you are and apply that to your... But Young also talks about that change we discussed earlier on, the evolution of man, not necessarily coming from a monkey and being a human, but talking about from an infant to an adult. Throughout the courses of your life, you might identify with one archetype at a particular stage in your life, but you shift into another one as you grow, or as you experience a new challenge, or as you reevaluate your own goals. For example, a uh, man may start off his life in his, as an explorer, constantly seeking adventure and independence, but later transition to the role of a caregiver as he starts a family, or a man who identifies strongly with the warrior archetype in his youth may find himself drawn to the sage or magician archetype later in life, seeking wisdom and introspection over action. I feel like that might be my life at some point or, an, or another. Warrior, caregiver, sage. That may be, I don't know. I, I think looking at my own life, I can see that for sure. I am a warrior. I've been that way. That's how I was raised. I will always going to have that warrior aspect, but maybe a warrior, a, a, a battle sage or a battle mage, if you will, for all of your D&D &D and RPG players out there. Maybe more of a battle mage. You're trying to be a, a noble savage, as it were. We'll see as we get through to this. I think that's a good 
good place for me. Let me know what you guys think. So what are some factors that influence archetypal change? Life circumstances, major events, marriage, parenthood, career change, personal loss. All these can shift uh, an archetypal, uh, can shift your archetype. Your own personal growth. How do you develop emotionally? How do you develop, develop spiritually? How do you develop you know, financially or in your career or, or whatever? One archetype may resonate more deeply with your current values and goals. Crises, whether it's a midlife crisis, a spiritual awakening, you're literally touched by God, you have a life-altering event like a wreck or a loss or something tragic, maybe it realigns your, um, your identity. Who knows? These are all things that could potentially change it. So yes, and it, to you know, slap the table on this, yes, you can change your archetype based on things that happen. If you don't, there's nothing wrong with it. But if you find yourself doing something sort of self-destructive as a jester or a rebel or an outlaw, maybe you should think at some point, I need to change this or carry on. I don't know. It depends on you. Individuation, again, is that process that involves embracing all aspects of the self, which may evolve, explore, involve exploring or integrating different archetypal energies over time. So how do you actually transition? Well, if a man feels compelled to transition from one archetype to another, you can do so by consciously embracing the traits or behaviors of the, of the new archetype. This involves letting go of certain aspects of your old identity and stepping into new roles and responsibility. You know, in the Bible, it says, you know, throw down your cloak, pick up a sword. In modern day, put down your Xbox controller and pick up your, your body armor because we got to fight. Or throw down your Xbox controller and it's time to be a, a father and pr provide for your kids and your family instead of sitting around playing video games all day long. Okay. As a video gamer, I can say I play way less now than I did as a, as a young man. Maybe as a young man, I shouldn't play it as much. I would have gotten more done. I'd had a pretty good balance, let me be to be fair. Uh, but there were some times it was like, man, put the controller down. All right. Put the bottle down. Get sober. Put the put the, put the cookie down and hit the gym, right? The, all these things. You can change your archetype, but you have to consciously embrace it and cut that old self out. If you're drawn to transition from the warrior to the sage, I'm talking to myself. Maybe you focus more on inner reflection, meditation, and intellectual pursuits while slowly stepping away from the action-oriented, confrontational mindset of a warrior. I will always be confrontational in the sense that I'm going to check you on your BS, but I will try to do it from a place of love, and I will try to do it from a place of knowledge and wisdom at the same time, too. That way you really get hit from all sides uh, if I need to talk to you. That's kind of my thing. So I'm going I'm to go with warrior sage is my archetype. Um, let me know. Do you guys who know me, let me know if that's right. So each of these archetypes also has what they call the shadow. Young emphasizes the concept of the shadow, which refers to the unconscious, darker aspects of ourselves, which we may suppress or deny. Each of these archetypes has its own shadow. We're going to get to each one of these as we go through. Um, and understanding these shadow aspects is crucial for our growth, right? The shadow of the king may involve becoming tyrannical or self-centered, while the shadow of the caregiver may manifest as martyrdom or over-control. If you acknowledge and integrate these shadow aspects, a man can transition between archetypes in a healthier, more balanced way if you know what the dark side is, okay? Sometimes you got to go through the darkness. you got to go through it to get to it, right? That's part of, part of life. So how does Christianity help, okay? To, to wrap up this in intro, Christianity offers a spiritual framework for men to enhance and develop our archetypes. Through faith, we can align our, our archetypal identities with our Christian values. Our, those values are love, humility, service, and self-sacrifice. The teachings of Jesus Christ provide a model for integrating many of the positive aspects of the various archetypes, and it helps us to avoid our own pitfalls and, pitfalls and get out of our own way and to stay out of that shadow. Christianity also emphasizes the importance of transformation and renewal, aligning with this concept of individuation. For example, the warrior archetype can be powerfully enhanced by Christian teachings on courage and spiritual warfare. Ephesians 6, 10 to 18, we talk about the armor of God. This symbolizes that so spiritual tools, that spiritual armor, that literal spiritual armor that helps you stand against evil. Christian men can challenge our inner warrior in defending our faith and protecting our families. That helps us to stand up to enforce justice and enact justice. And it, it avoids the shadow aspects of aggression and violence. You should be capable of extreme violence, but have it under extreme and voluntary control. In our tradition, true strength comes from reliance on God rather than physical power alone. It's okay to be strong, but God's always stronger. 
If he needs you to be strong and go out and physically fight, he'll he'll give you the tools to do so. But he will also fight your battles for you. Crazy concept. How does it affect the king archetype? We'll do we'll do one more, and I don't want to get too far into the weeds. Yeah, in theology, uh, the king is a deeply resonant with the idea of servant leadership. We've talked about servant leadership before. Go back and listen to the episode. Jesus is the king of kings. Refer- referenced many times in the Bible. Specifically, let's go Revelation 19.16. That's what my notes say. Yet his kingship is defined by humility, service, and love for others. Christian men who identify with the king archetype can enhance their leadership roles by following Christ's example. When you focus on leading through service and sacrifice rather than seeking personal power or control, the biblical model of the king emphasizes, um, the, this model of the king emphasizes stewardship and helps us to protect the, the vulnerable and to rule with justice and wisdom. All right. So to conclude, finally, I know this is, I try to keep it short, but this, there's, there's 12 archetypes. Get, stick with me. <laughs> These archetypes, again, give us that framework for understanding our roles and identities that we, that we as men adopt throughout our lives. Because I said it, can we change? Yes, you're going to change throughout your life, okay? Some are going to feel more act, or natural or prominent in certain stages of your life, but we can change as we grow and transform. Our faith offers guidance. Look to the Word. Look to other strong men of principle to help guide and enhance your own archetype. Strive for that selflessness. Strive for wisdom. Strive for courage and creativity. And strive to emulate and model Jesus. When we ground our archetypal journey in our Christian values, we as men can navigate complexities of each archetype. And we can take the shadow aspects, know that they exist, but kick them out, okay? We can live out our calling. We can live out our purpose with real integrity. Whether you choose to deepen your commitment to a specific archetype or decide to transition to another one, your faith will serve as a constant source of strength, direction, and it will always be there to inspire you to be the best that you possibly can. Amen? So be it, as it were. I'm going to put some references down below, as per the usual. Um, I hope that was a good introduction. We're going to dive into... I'm going to spin a wheel and see what we want to go to next week, but I'm going to hit all 12 of these in sequence. Um, and I'll make a little playlist on YouTube so you can follow along with all these so you don't have to go and search for them later on. Um, if you like this episode, please stick around for the next 12 weeks. It's going to be a good study. I think you guys will have a good time. Please subscribe to the channel. Let me know where you're, let me know uh, what archetype you are down in the comments below. If you're watching this on YouTube or if you're on Spotify, you can leave comments on there now too. Uh, but subscribe to the show, leave a rating, leave a review, go to Good Pods, fill, fill out the uh, your little uh, login there and follow the Three Pillars podcast there. Help us to grow because that's the cool, that's just cool stuff, right? Also check out Three Pillars Podcast website, Three Pillars Podcast at WorkForce.com. I am dropping a blog every Monday. I hope you're reading those there for your edification. I don't do this just because. Um, I want you guys to get something out of what I'm doing here at Three Pillars Podcast. Again, it's not about likes, it's not about followers. I've had plenty of you guys reach out and say thank you for what you're doing. So I'm just going to keep doing it because you asked me to. If you know somebody who would benefit from this, please share it with them. Uh, wherever you listen to your, your platform, let's just send ripples to the, uh, the the metaverse, as it were. So that's all I got for you guys this week. We'll end with a quick word of prayer. Kick you guys out for a phenomenal weekend. Let us pray. Father God, thank you so much for being a prime example of who we should truly emulate every single day in our lives, in whatever aspect or archetype we find ourselves in. We can still find you in there for the service of others, to the betterment and the fulfillment of your kingdom, and for the glory of you, Lord. This is what we do. Once we are aware of that fact and we are aware of our strengths and our talents and our spiritual gifts, help us to use them to the maximum potential that we can be the best warriors, kings, or jesters if need be, Lord. Help us to be true to you that we can, that someone can see you through us. Lord, I ask you to bless anybody tuning into this. Give them strength and faith every single day. Guide them and direct them all the days of their lives. Lord, I ask all this in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. All right, guys. I'm Chase Tobin, a.k.a. Tobinator the Motivator. Until next time, Tobinator, out.